evaluating square roots for Algebra 1. Some nice numbers when we're talking about square roots, some numbers that you really want to remember are all of the perfect squares. In other words, 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3. All of these results here, the 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, etc. These numbers are all great numbers to look for and to memorize so that you can know that they are perfect squares and so you can get the square root of them pretty easily. So if you want to memorize a list of, of multiplication tables, if you haven't already, this is a really good list to start out with. It'll help you immensely when going through and factoring for square roots. So this lesson's a little bit about solving square roots that are not always perfect squares. So it's pretty easy to solve them if they are, but what if they're not? For example, what if we are asked to solve the square root of 21? The first thing that we look for is, is it a perfect square? Or is there a factor that's a perfect square? The factors of 21 are 1, 3, 7. There's not really, in 21, there's no perfect square factors. So we'll go on to the next part, and that's to estimate it. What we would do with 21, for example, is, oops, that's 21, is look at the two perfect square numbers that are around 21. So the square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of 25 is 5. So those are the two perfect squares that go on either side of 21. Does that make sense? 16 is the one that's less than 21 and 25 is the one that's just one greater than 21. All right, and we look at it and say, well, 21 is right about between 16 and 25. So the square root of 21 is right about the middle between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25. So that means it's approximately 4 and a half. Okay, I'll show, we'll show some examples of how to do this a little bit more. Here, let's look at another example. Oh, first off, if we use the calculator, we find that the square root of 21 is 4.58250, blah, blah, blah. So we were about, this is just a way to check for accuracy. All right, it's even more accurate than the abacus. <laughs> All right, so let's practice a little bit. If we're going to evaluate the square root of 27, the first thing that we do is find perfect square factors. In this case, 27 is 9 times 3. 9 is a perfect square, so we can pull that out and find the square root of 9 is 3. So in other words, this is 3 times the square root of 3. Now we have to find what is the value of the square root of 3. Well, we're going to look at perfect squares that are around the square root of 3, or around 3. 3 is between 1 and 4. 1 is a perfect square and 4 is a perfect square. So because 3 is between 1 and 4, the square root of 3 is between the square root of 1 and the square root of 4. So it's halfway between 1 and 2. That's another typo. It's halfway between 1 and 2, because 2 is the square root of 4. So it's going to be about 1.6, 1.7, something like that. So if we want to multiply that out and actually solve, it's approximately equal to 3 times 1.7 or about 5.1. And with things like this, this is a real estimate. These ones here, it's a real guess. If we used 1.6, we'd be a little bit farther off, but it wouldn't be that far off. It'd be pretty close. Um, we want to check with our calculator and see that we're about the right area, so that looks about right. Let's look at the next one. And the square root of 492 first thing that we do is we look for perfect square factors. We have a perfect square factor of 4. 4 times 123 is 492. We'll take the square root of 4 is equal to 2. And now what we need to do is find two perfect squares that are one that's just greater than and one that's just less than 123. From our original list, we could take the square root of 121 
and the square root of 144. Okay, so those are our two perfect squares that are on either side of 123. One is less than and one's greater than. So because 123 is between 121 and 144, the square root of 123 is between the square root of 121 and 144. Because it's really close to 121, you see, this is all, it's all estimating. Is it closer to 121 or 144? Well, clearly, it's really close to 121, just a little bit greater than that. The square root of 121 is 11, so we're going to say that it's you know, about 11.1 or 11.2, OK? Because if 123 is really close to 121, then the square root of 123 is going to be really close to the square root of 121, just a little bit bigger. So we'll go ahead and say it's about 11.2. And when we multiply that together, 2 times 11.2 is 22.4. We can use the calculator and find that it's actually 22.1810. So we were pretty close, 22.4, 22.1. You know, it was, I mean, it was pretty close. If we had used 11.1, it would have been a little bit closer, but you know what? This is estimating. Okay, when we estimate, this is this is pretty close. When we want something more accurate, you definitely need to start checking with your calculator or doing other more advanced functions that we'll show you later on. But for now, estimating, you just start using logic. Where does it fit? 123, it's between these two perfect squares. So the square root of 23 is going to be between the square root of both of those numbers. Which one is it closer to? And just give it an approximate decimal value. So I hope that that's been helpful, and have a great day.